Oh damn, I'm on TV. <laughs> Kia ora everyone, welcome to Warriors Anonymous. This is, oh my god, this is the first one that we've ever had where you can actually oh, see us. Yeah. Uh, of course, if you're listening on the podcast, then you still can't see us, but, uh, but it's all good. Welcome along to uh, an awesome season, or hopefully an awesome season for uh, for our team, the Warriors, uh, and also for, uh, for whatever we're doing here on Warriors Anonymous. My name is Jared Cronin, and let's bring in the boys because it's been a uh, heck of an off-season uh, for uh, for the lads. First of all, we've got money to sauce, brother. What's uh, what's been happening with you, man? All right, kiddo, everyone. How's everyone going? Good to be back. Um, what's been happening? Well, bought a house, now double Oof. the mortgage, and I feel like a poor man. But hey, got two uh, two houses, so I'm more happy. But uh, yeah, no, a lot's happened. You know, had a good break, back into work, and uh, looking forward to the new year. And uh, I didn't realise, I forgot we were on camera, so I would have put on a better shirt, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> like the Mad Butcher said to us last year, he was like, geez, dress up next time for your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Uh, yeah, yeah, checklist wonder. Yeah. <laughs> we might listen to him at some stage. We've also got uh, Daniel Whatakura. Hey, bro, how has your off-season been? Kura, kato no my heart my no. Um... Board is back, 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 back again. Get, get, get. Board is back, back, Ooh. back. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Back. Uh, our season's been good, people. Um, really had to find some other sports to watch closely, just for that void of our rugby league. So, slap fighting. Um, I like a bit of Premier League. Was it slap fighting? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've seen a lot of that on my reels, eh? Ooh. Those are getting knocked out. Yeah, oh, oh, flat fighting oh. yeah, so just filling my time with um, all sorts of codes, but uh, yeah, just kind of just building the excitement levels into the season. So yeah, looking forward to twenty twenty three. Woo! Exciting times indeed. We also have Isaac Sauce, bro. What kind of milestones have you been uh, getting up to on the in the off season? Well, uh, I think. Uh... First of all, let's start with the dress code. Obviously, I didn't get the memo because my T-shirt's actually inside out. I've just realized. So I uh, didn't really dress up for the first podcast. Oh, well, hey, we're just happy you were wearing sleeves. singlet from last week, bro. Yeah. Oh, well, I happened there. Yeah. This wonder, but... Yeah, well, yeah. Jenny, Jenny, no, Jenny, Jenny Jackson. Jackson. It's, actually, it's actually inside out. So <laughs> I hope Sir Peter Leach is not watching. Um, big news. Engaged now. So, Yay! Yay! Finally, the, the, the partner awesome. came over from Japan, and she's quickly acclimatized to becoming a Warriors fan. So she's not signed up to the podcast, though, so that's a bit of a talking point. Have to discuss it after this. But, uh, no, everything's been going good. Uh, ready for the new podcast season. So, yeah. Just, yeah nice. I'm still gutted about this Inside Out t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you also joined the uh, the 40 Club as well, man. Well, yeah, there's that, too. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Yeah. But now that if, if, since this is on video, maybe our Warriors Anonymous fans can tell me, do I look like Motu Tony? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. This is the first question for everyone. Does Isaac look like Motu Tony? Or uh, what, what else is there? Uh, Cambodian Vin Diesel? Cambodian you probably need the, uh, the singlet for that one to really. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really oh, ice or it, Andrew Tate. Or oh, was it? Yeah, Cambodian <laughs> Andrew Tate. Yeah. <laughs> top G. Top G. But, uh, <laughs> Cambodian accent. <laughs> and top G. <laughs> <laughs> I am a top G on a woman oh, in the awesome. kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Emotional damage. Oh my gosh. I'm just under attack here from a little French bulldog down by my feet who's trying to eat a, uh, an important form. One second, boys. Yeah, important <laughs> forms. Hello. Yeah. Come here. You want to be on the podcast? You want to be on the podcast? Cambodian top G. Yeah, mascot. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the tape brothers, eh? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> this is Prince Miles. He was uh, he was in a bit of a, an attack the other day, so uh, he's he's recovered well. But um, oh, but now he's decided that he wants to come over here and, and play with me and uh, and just cause a bit of a problem. So um, everybody, say hi. Hello, hey. oh, <laughs> Prince Miles. Is it a combination of Scott Prince and Nate Miles together? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, yeah, and, and a sense. Yeah, child dog. In a sense, he is classy, and uh, in another sense, he is actually also taking a shit in the hallway. So, yeah, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's a good mix of those two. Um, so, uh, also, um, you boys don't actually know this, but um, 
uh, Prince Miles there is actually going to be a, uh, a big brother uh, as of uh, August this year because um, self and the wife are expecting. Whoa! <laughs> With child. Yeah, yeah. My so. man. Congrats. So I'd, uh, thought I'd just, you know, surprise oh, you boys oh, with that oh, for the, uh, the first episode oh, for 2023. That blows all of us. Oh, you oh, <laughs> You win. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Right, right, so, awesome yeah, it's, uh, news. Thanks, bro. Yeah, yeah. Really, uh, really excited. Um, as we are all excited about the uh, the season that's coming up. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Let's have a little look at short balls, the first one for the season. And we're going to be describing our excitement levels for 2023. In the form of a fond memory. Isn't that nice? Who would like to go first on our first short walls? Who's going to take the first hit up? Oh, I think uh, Isaac's pointing at me <laughs> oh, wait, on my I'll screen. Put it in hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So, <laughs> but as a kid, I'd always love going to Rainbow's End. So, who doesn't love going to Rainbow's End, right? Like going to Auckland, go all the rides, excited as. So always excited for that to happen. But I always remember, A, driving there is like seven hours. I'd always throw up in the car than the desert road. So I had to deal with that. And then also get to like Rainbow's End. It was never as good as it was, was I was expecting. So and occasionally sometimes I think I'd maybe piss my pants in the pirate ship. <laughs> that wasn't good. And then I maybe threw up again on the on the roller coaster. So, the, so it kind of... The excitement's there, but then that's the going back to the memory of the last time I was there. Thinking, oh, you know, so I'm thinking about the last season, thinking, shit, that was a tragic <laughs> season. But who cares? We're back into it. So there's, Get there's me on the pirate ship. fond memories, but a slight bit of trauma, and they're just kind of mixed in with it. So I, I think yeah. that, that is very fitting, I think, for where we are currently placed. Um, Moneta, <laughs> what is your fond memory? I'm not going to lie, I struggled. Um, but when I think of a fond memory, it's like, you remember Oaks Nettle House? Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I love Oaks. Yeah. And it, I, it's been a while, like, since I've had the, I, I'd always go for the uh, Nasi Goring and always, like, without a shadow of doubt, I'd always come back for that. And uh, I went back to it, uh, I think, last year, and it just wasn't quite the same, if you know what I mean. And I think I've moved on. No, and I've like, on to better nasty gorings, but I'm not saying that about the Warriors, and I don't oh. know where I'm going with the story. But that's where I'm... are you leaving us? <laughs> He's leaving for the Bulldogs. And I, and, but I'm thinking that with, and was it the new the new coach? We're moving on into better new things, right? So we've got a new Ooh. we've got a new coach coming in. Sounds like got a new mentality after reading the article and stuff. They're, they're implementing more of an accountability factor towards how they play rather than like the old spray that they used to do last year, just like there's a bit of a nasty gore you know, a bit of just the curry powder. Now they've added something <laughs> a bit different and now they've added a bit more, you know, some sauce, so a bit more accountability. Ooh. And I think this could be the ingredient for success this year. So yeah. <laughs> so they're going to so taste really, really good or you're going to shit yeah, yourself. Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's that's again. That's yeah. That's pretty fitting. Uh, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first question is: uh, Is Oaks still yeah. open, or is it still there? Or? It's, it's still, still there. there. Still wow. there. Oh, geez, okay. Down Cuba, Cuba yeah. Mall, eh? Cuba yeah. Mall, right in the middle yeah, of Wellington. Bottom of Cuba. <laughs> the heart. Oh, of man. Eat that every day. The nasty green oh. shadow of a doubt. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good spot. That was a really good spot. Also, um, how good was that article that you mentioned? That one. Oh my god, that was far out as a. As a Warriors fan, oh, there we go. Bit of sponsorship going on there from Buddha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what yeah. Are we, uh... Tiny from Garage Project. If you're listening, we want about 18 cases of this stuff. Thank you. <laughs> oh, listen to that. At zero, zero as well. Oh, yeah. He's even filling it up right by the microphone. Just to get that. That's sound. Yeah, that's right. It's like, Chee. it knows its own Chee. name. <laughs> it's Chee. Yeah, man, that was that was such a great. I already oh, love that it. article. It was just so good to get that you know behind the scenes kind of feel and just understanding yeah. what these guys do every yeah. day. Yeah, it wasn't. Um, and, you know, even just how early they get up. No one even talking about oh, we've like the fittest we've ever been. You know, like as we have like every past years, but it was more about the change and kind of routine and you know an attitude and you know responsibility. And, and I really thought, oh, this is different. 
Fingers crossed. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's all right, bro. Absolutely. And Isaac, what is your fond memory that is going to sum up your excitement levels for 2023? Oh, yeah. You're, you're fondling me- memory. You're fond memory. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so many of those. Um, oh. Fun oh. memory will probably, be, you know, it's it's no secret that uh, Asians in video games are quite fond of one another. So uh, I remember the first time Super Street Fighter Two came out on the Mega Drive, and um, me and Manir didn't have a Mega Drive, so we had to wait to hire it out at the local Video Easy. Um, and Super Street Fighter Two was was due to be released any day but we didn't know when so basically Manira and me would call up the video store every day to check if it had arrived <laughs> and then when it finally arrived just booked that mega drive in two controllers super yeah. street fighter 2 bang tv on full blast mind blown and it was just like every bit of excitement just the lead up to that made it all worth it so i'm hoping the warrior season um. is pretty much like that I can pull out the Mega Drive. I remember the guy was... Plug it into the UHF. Sort of. I remember the guy oh. was so annoyed because I was calling up every 10 minutes. And like, I yeah, ran down. He hadn't even finished like putting the plas- the sticker onto the case. And I was just waiting there watching him getting it. So he was like, <laughs> just take it and go! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, customer yeah. service. So just a quick recap. Uh, the Oaks Noodle House is still open, mm-hmm. uh, but Video Easy is not still no. open. Video Easy is not open. Uh, RIP. 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 Video Easy. Hard luck. Unlike yours. Um, fellas, what have we? Uh, what sort of off-season thoughts have we had uh, mm-hmm. around what the Warriors have been up to? Because they've been uh, you know, pretty um, active on social media. Um, Daniel, what have you spotted? Uh, what have you liked or, or you know, just seen? Oh, just um, uh, seeing the some of the boys come back. Uh, um, Chans to Mighty Martin, they've got back to uh, back home, really. So reconnecting as well, and just the the thoughts of um, being back home around Fano, reconnecting and wanting to get the season a good crack. I like that. Um, there was a little stint where Weeby made all of them uh, go get average jobs for the day as well. So it was good. Just you know put themselves in the shoes of, of their fans as well and appreciate actually how um, yeah, lucky they are from one respect around they get to play a game, get paid to play that game as well. So that's been quite good. Um, and then, yeah, I guess apart from that, um, it's been a bit quiet with what's been going on, right? So um, I think the other thing really is just the 30-man the squad and there's a lot of debate going around around how many spaces we've got, what we're looking for, what we don't have as well. So, you know, the general view is we might be short a, a big, big middle forward. But, um, yeah, I, I guess that's the, the general vibe of seeing and then enjoying, you know, as we always do, throw out our teams so who's going to be where in the first game as well. So I, I love the chat. Um, you see some absolute shockers out there. Yeah, like, pe- pe- players not even in the club. Like, he can't name that guy. <laughs> there's um, been some really good ones as well so that, that's what i'm loving uh, actually i had forgotten about that whole uh getting the warriors to be you know regular jobs for the day kind of set up they probably should have gone maybe one step further and like all the people that they'd swapped with should have become warriors for the day and they like go and <laughs> do all the you know trainings or whatever like you know weight sessions and sprints and whatnot like it's just to just to put that in perspective as well i was like mm. oh, okay actually you fellas actually yeah got pretty hard <laughs> it's a really good point like you know, you're yelling at them oh what well, you missed that tackle why don't you make that hole or whatever it's like well you go and do it that's right Motherfucker. yeah I go and run down like you know down at the park with the dog and i'm like you know after a couple of meters i'm like Woof, i'm feeling it <laughs> anyways um sleeper picks for 2023 saucy you got your eye on uh, on anyone in particular i don't know why yeah but i i really like the look of the tigers uh their forward pack it's just uh, been taken up a notch with John Bateman, who is one of my favourite players uh, from a couple of years ago. In case you didn't know, he played for Canberra for two seasons, uh, the Pommy import, and just immediately made a difference. So it was just a click of a finger that took that team turn. So um, I can't imagine um, him not having that same sort of effect on the Tigers, as well as Papaletti joining them as well. Um, yeah, Tigers, I feel like, are a real 
a real sleeper this year, and they they might just suddenly click. I mean, they've always had like some pretty good weapons, but I think this might be the year where that it all sort of comes together. And I don't think a guy like um, Bateman's going to let the team slide. He's just a proven winner, mm. and he's just a no bullshit kind of player. I, I think they're going to rise to the occasion with him in the team. Yeah, interesting, bro. It'll be interesting as well with the um, uh, the trial match coming up against the Tigers. I know it's yeah, it's going to be quite different teams running out there in the trial game versus you know what will be in the regular season. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it'll be interesting to see how a lot of these young guys are, are tracking on both teams. Yeah. Um, well, Kur- Kurosai as well. Api Kurosai added to the Tigers as well. I mean, yeah, you see that whole forward pack is just stacked, and with him leading them around the park. It's they're going to be. I think they're going to be scary. I think they will. It's going to hum. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. Uh, I was actually. I heard a bit of a murmur today uh, in the SEN SEN halls. Um, uh, Brian Fletcher was saying that he had heard that the Tigers were about to throw like ridiculous money at um, Mitchell Moses to try and get him uh, from twenty twenty four. So. Ooh. So yeah, so uh, stay tuned. We'll, uh, we'll keep uh, keep a little watch out what's going on. Um, Moneta, your old Nasi Goreng, uh, I mean your old favourite football team, <laughs> the Bulldogs, have actually been uh, been doing all right this year as well. And in the off season, I know everyone does yeah. well in the off season, don't they? But um, no, but um, yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah, pretty good. they'll be pretty good. But you brought up a another rumor that I saw on Facebook was around RTS possibly coming back, and that's yes. going back to the Roosters. I have heard. Is that rumor really? true? Yeah. Is that rumor? I don't know. Anything well, in the SNZ I mean, hallways being yeah, talked about? Yeah, has that been talked about? <laughs> well, I mean, it has been, has been chatted about. I haven't heard it directly. Um, but, yeah, apparently some of the guys in there reckon it's, you know, it's it's a real likelihood that he could be. Oh, wow. Um, so I'm just kind of scanning. Because they've clearly got room in their cat, eh? You know, <laughs> Imagine the back <laughs> one. Imagine the back one. A couple more bucks. You've got, you got Artie's Manu. And oh, I can't remember now. Suwali, he, he would have played. Yeah. Oh, someone would hang on. Probably the Suwali. They named it. They named a team. Someone put a team. They had yeah, Teddy, Teddy, uh, Suwali, and um, Tupo, and um, Joey Manu, Artis, and does the other centre, Luke Keary, and um, <laughs> Sam Walker. Sam Walker. So oh I mean, gosh. that's already over the cap. So <laughs> it should happen. <laughs> Just the backline alone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have to gonna do a little bit of massaging to get that. And, uh, cap, was but, it Crichton's um, going over to the Bulldogs? Was it this year? That's right. Yeah, 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 Girl, yeah. Girl, Girl yeah. Day. <laughs> and he's had a cracking off season as well. Uh, Stephen Crichton, you know, with the World Cup, having done yeah. so well with Samoa. He's just uh, what I like about him. He's just one of those guys who's a match winner. Mm. You know, you put him in any spot. He's like a Valentine Holmes kind of guy. Um, you know, he can he can win you a game in any number of different ways, and um, yeah, I'm happy that he's getting a, a bit of coin um, to to make the move. Albeit, he, you know, may not win as much as as what he would be at the, the Panthers. Um, can we speak- refer to Phil Gould as Gould Doggy Dog for the rest of the season? <laughs> <laughs> the, I like it. The, the dog father. The Gould the Gould He's, father. Uh, yeah, the Gould fa- Gould father, and also um, I'm sure Brian Toto, off season related, would have. Should have probably chosen Stephen Crichton to be his best man and deliver his best man speech. <laughs> of course. Instead of Jerome. Luai. Yeah. Luai. He, he didn't, was really do a, didn't really do a great job, did he? Uh, poor old Jerome. And, <laughs> and poor old Brian, to be fair. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Um, speaking of footy, uh, the first game of the year actually kicked off on the weekend. Um, it was SG Ball. Because the Warriors are back in the uh, the SG Ball ranks uh, as well as the New South Wales Cup, so uh, I actually went along to the game. Uh, caught up with uh, Richie Morgan from Warrior Nation. Hey, hey, got the hat. Um, and it was good to good to see him and a few of the you know a few of the faithful out there just uh, lending a lung. And uh, apparently the old um, Bunnies TV commentators saying, "Oh, geez, these uh, these Warrior supporters are getting a little bit rowdy," <laughs> which we were a little bit. Uh, but yeah, good ten eight win by the boys and some uh, you know really. Uh, pretty warm conditions, blazing sunshine. Um, I I was really impressed with. Um, I, I really liked our back row because uh, they're, they're they're big. Well, this whole team is big. They're all big. Like I was looking at them versus the Rabbitohs, and man, there was a real difference there. 
So it'll be interesting to see how they match up with the other teams going forward. But um, but the back row, Fatialofa, Yedemir, and Halasima, some famous names in there, um, those guys, they played the whole game. And they just, they kept going. They made all their tackles. They ran hard. They lined up beautifully on defense. Um, and just, yeah, they were physical for for the entire match. So I was really uh, impressed with them. Uh, as well as um, Tanner Stowers smith um, of course, Warriors Anonymous member, uh, who was the captain and led from the front, mate. He, uh, he led them all right. Um, and they they needed it because it was you know it was, it was pretty trying towards the end of the game, um, so yeah, awesome to see a team. They got some real good um, good potential there. I, I I wasn't really expecting a heck of a lot in that first game, but to see them turn up and do well, man, uh, that that got me quite excited. So um, now yeah, we saw um, we saw them play. <laughs> some of them would have played last year when they played the Tigers game back home. Uh, it was the under eighteens then as well. Um, actually, funny enough, they, they played the Tigers, obviously, and um, didn't win that day. But you could the size difference; you could you could tell these boys were huge as well. So that really bodes well for um, connecting our pathways back, eh, and getting us back to where we need to. Yeah, that's. It. I don't think I've ever been so excited about like watching these lower grades because you know just because of that aspect. Mm. And I think everyone is kind of keeping an eye on things a bit more because we need the, you know, the pathways to come back and the the development to go on. But um. Uh, just quickly, we're we're about to jump out in a couple of minutes to go and uh, get ourselves ready to have a chat to Freddie Lussick, of course, from the, uh, the one New Zealand Warriors. Um, so uh, just quickly before we go, um, boys, we've got a, we've got the the opening game coming up, uh, NRL regular season game coming up in Wellington. So uh, you guys are all based around there. So what's uh, what's the go there? What is uh, what is happening with uh, with that game? Oh well, wow. we've got um, well, we've got a bit of a crew, Warriors Anonymous crew and co friends, um, heading down. So it's a f- eight o'clock kickoff on a Friday, third of March. Um, it's the second fixture for the season, and yeah, we're getting along. We're, we're positioned in the minute halfway, um, and we might be. Uh, well, we are. I've got a spot at the Duke um, in Wellington, it's just across the road from the train station. So, yeah, boys will be getting down there for the build up, and yeah, it'll be a mean night, I think. Yeah, awesome, very awesome. That sounds cool. Um, so yeah, there you go, guys. We'll keep you we'll keep you informed as well in the lead up to um to that event, as well as whatever else is uh, going to be going on because there's going to be a bit. Um, so boys, let's uh, jump out of here now, uh, and we'll come back in just a mo- oh just a couple of moments, and we'll see if um Freddie is ready for us. We'll catch you in a second on Warriors Anonymous. All right, welcome back to Warriors Anonymous. As promised, we've got the second half coming at you. With Freddie Lussick from the One New Zealand Warriors. Hey, bro, welcome along. Hey, guys, cheers. Thanks for having me, mate. Uh, really, uh, really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. Uh, first question for you, bro, is um, with the uh, the whole you know recent rain and floods and that all going on in Auckland. Um, you know, how how has that um, has that sort of impacted you or, or any of the team? Uh, no, luckily, I, where I'm staying at the moment, I'm um, pretty lucky. We don't have any flooding or anything. Um, but I've actually I've like, never heard of like Auckland like flooding before. Obviously, if I'm from Oz, so I obviously wouldn't have heard much. But um, I think only two of the boys had a few like little issues, but nothing serious, which is good. Um, we were meant to go yeah, uh, have a camp down south, but we cancelled that because um, yeah, couldn't get into the airport. <laughs> no, nah, we're gonna we're gonna Jeez. drive down. I, I can't remember the actual name of where we we're gonna stay, but I think um, where we were meant to have the camp was was pretty badly flooded, so um, we decided to cancel it. Oh yeah, bummer, man. No. I I lived in Auckland for like ten years, and like I'd never seen anything like that, and neither has anyone who's lived there for like fifty odd years. So yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, you just timed it well, yeah. though. Like, you just came at the right time. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So new new markets not flooded or anything like that. Um, because I'll be going up there another week or so. <laughs> um, I'm staying. I live in Mission Bay. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, yeah, nice new market's not Bro. too far from me, but I don't go in there uh, too much. But I think yeah, there was a little bit of floods here and there, but sort of where I'm saying it wasn't too bad. Okay, nice. as long as the food places aren't flooded. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you come from a uh, you know strong footballing fan. Like out of your brothers, like Darcy and Joey, playing in NRL too. So, have you learned anything from them in regards to y- your journey? Yeah, I in, guess it was. Um, it's pretty cool, obviously, growing up having two older brothers, you know, playing the NRL, and you know, growing up as the the youngest sibling and seeing them play and just go through the grades. I guess you just pick up little things like that. But um, 
wouldn't say anything serious like we sit down and chat heaps of footy or nothing sort of that just more I guess off the field and the way they train and look after themselves stuff like that I sort of pick up on but yeah well, they, anything you wouldn't do uh, I might not say it on here, but um, there's probably... <laughs> Jesus. What is that? Yeah, probably... Oh, your brother's under the bus. Yeah. Under the bus. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so we don't want to comment. Likes to go rogue. <laughs> the oldest one likes to go yeah. rogue a little bit, but no, nah, I won't throw him under the bus there. But no, nah, they're... <laughs> they're both awesome. <laughs> um, so um, you were part of the Roosters set up uh, for a couple of seasons, so what inspired you to come over to New Zealand? And how has that been? Yeah, I guess an opportunity sort of presented itself for me to um, come over and try something different. Um, you know, I guess at the end of the day, it's a business as well. So um, people come, people go as well. And gave me a good opportunity last year to play some uh, some games at the back end of the season, which I um, I got to do and got uh, to be a part of that homecoming game, which was um, which was really special. And you could tell that it meant a lot to the, uh, the playing group. Oh, cool, cool. Awesome. And, uh, oh, sorry, I've just, uh, missed my question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. First podcast of the year. Yep. Huh? <laughs> knock on, knock on. First fumble, uh, bro. As, as you can see, I'm, I'm quite, as you can see, I'm quite, I'm quite the professional. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, oh, God. Uh, yeah, God. I've got him rattled, boys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, oh, mate, you just, uh, yeah, you just you just shocked me, mate. Uh, uh, is there anything in Auckland that's hugely different from uh, Sydney? Sorry, can you say that again, please. Yeah. Is there anything in Auckland? That... You know what? Can we just skip to the next question? Oh, tell me the fuck. Sorry. <laughs> Sub. Uh, Sub. Sussy jumping in here. Change. <laughs> save the day, bro. Save the day, Sussy. <laughs> Yeah, so you, you were talking brother, about the, you were talking about the Warriors homecoming game and how much it um, you could see it meant to everyone. Um, what was that whole experience like for you? Just seeing well, from our point of view, we loved seeing all the players getting in, getting stuck and getting involved. You know, going around the field, thanking the fans. For you, um, what was that whole experience like? Especially after the game, seeing um, the fans really coming out in force and staying around. Yeah, I guess like when I first came to the club, I sort of got bits and pieces, you know, culture meetings and all that type of thing. And um, it didn't really hit me until we came here for that homecoming game, how much it actually meant um, to the playing group. And also the senior players with, you know, families, I haven't seen them in a while. Um, you could tell when we got home for that week, um, there was just a whole different buzz around here. And um, I guess it showed um, when we played, we, we uh, beat, the, I think it was the Tigers, uh, pretty convincingly. So um, hopefully it stays the same when we play this year at home and in New Zealand, I guess, because we've got a few games um, all over New Zealand. So hopefully we uh, get yeah. right behind us and get some wins. Well, I remember what's coming to Wellington. <laughs> yeah, hopefully I get picked on the team. But yeah, I, um, that, yeah I can't wait. It should be awesome. I remember seeing you after that homecoming game, bro, and you gave away your shirt. And I was like, bro, this guy's tough, man. Like in Auckland in winter, just giving away his shit. Like, <laughs> I was like rugged up on the sideline. Going, sort of regretting cool. it actually after about five minutes. But no, nah, there, there was a nice kid there. He sort of just waited patiently. So I thought, why not? So. Awesome, bro. Good, Good man. Good on you. Good on you. Well, um, yeah. despite uh, the big homecoming and whatnot, the results uh, last year didn't really go as planned. But uh, how much of a buzz has there been this off season for you know the, the, this year? I guess. Yeah, no, it's been awesome. Um, you know, Webby, the new coach, and um, I guess the way he's gone about his things, it's been it's been really good. Um, the boys are loving it. Um, different style of coaching, I guess, and uh, lots more detail in um, everything that he does and the way he delivers his his speeches. And um, no, it's really good. And training's been going really well. So the boys are. Ripping in. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, I guess with you saying that, are there any players in particular that you kind of seen out there in the trading paddock that uh, you think are particularly primed for a big year? Um, yeah, I guess all the boys have had really good um, off seasons. Um, Shaw Johnson's come back in really, really good shape. He's sort of, I haven't obviously played with him for years and years, but the boys that have that said it's probably in the, in the best shape he's been in. So, um, so it's always a good sign for your, your halfback to be, you know, raring to go. And 
ready to take on the season. But yeah, no, everyone's training really well and hopefully just get these trials done and rip in around one. Yeah, there's enough uh, topless uh, photos of Sean Johnson yeah, circling he, around in the media after that <laughs> MMA thing. He doesn't mind the camera old Shawnee, so you don't want to pump his tires up too much. The boys are trying to knock him down a few pegs. But... Nah, it's good. He's got a good rig. Yeah, I'd rig. get it out. I'd have got that as well, I guess. <laughs> yeah, bro. same. Um, but I don't. So, uh, pre-season training, my man. Um, what's What's been the hardest session? There's always a few sessions each preseason, each club and each team as well. But what's been the hardest session so far at the Wires? Um, I guess when we got, uh, we had to go down to Bethel's, the the sand dunes there. Ah, yeah, yes, I yes. didn't know, didn't really know uh, much about it, and sort of got there, and the boys were. Weren't really saying much. We were a bit nervous, and uh, once we got going, we were right. But uh, it was it was tough times out there. I'm not gonna lie. So um, couldn't believe like how steep like some of the sand dunes were. So um, no, it was good. That was that was a tough session for sure. That was to be honest. Yeah. Was, how long are you out there? Um, oh, we're out there probably over an hour or so, and then then we're done. Oh. But um, yeah, grueling at the time, but just getting flogged in the sand. Yeah, eh? yeah, hundred percent. I sort of feel a bit. Uh, bad for the you know the heavier boys. Us lighter guys were sort of getting through it pretty good, but <laughs> the big fellas, you know, they not really built for them. It is, so. but no, it was, it was a tough session. Nice, it'll pay off in the in the back yeah, end. Yeah, fingers crossed. Get that get that working. Yeah. yeah, nice, um, nice man. And how have you and you other new recruits settled into to your new home in Auckland? How you find find living in Auckland? Yeah, no. I, personally, I, I'm I'm loving it. To be honest, I um I couldn't wait to sort of move over here and get settled in. And um, I got a newborn on the way as well. So first first baby. Oh, congrats, man! So I'm um, gonna have a little kiwi running around. So um, <laughs> so, yeah, there are a few of the, the Aussie boys that have you know moved over here. We have got Mitch Barnett, Luke Medcalf. There's a, there's a fair few yep. uh, new faces around, and um, everyone seems to be settling in really well, which is which is what you want and. Enjoying uh, life here. Nice, Freddie. Nice. Now, I normally get left to the end, so I might go a little bit off piece, a little bit off script. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Uh oh. So I apolo- <laughs> apologise in advance. Oh, I won't yeah, go oh, boy. too hard, but. <laughs> there you go. So, um, <laughs> bit of warrior. So, a question ball. I had actually, what are we going to do this year, all the players? I'm, I'm trying to figure out who the pound for pound the strongest warrior is this year. Freddie, I think you've got a good shot at this, man. So what I want to know is kind of what you're weighing in at and what your what your bench one R one R M max is in the gym. Uh, so I'm weighing around 91, 92 kilos, and I think yeah, Solid. we did it actually the other day. I got uh, one forty for one. So. Oh, tidy. Yeah, so doing my best. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so. Yeah, there's some. I think we've got someone in our in our Warriors Anonymous crew that's like a stats person, eh? So I'll get him to calculate it. But I think you might have a bit of a shot there, mate. It's uh, pound yeah, pound. Pound, <laughs> it's pound, pound. pound. Um, yeah, nice man, eh? But eh, but and so I must admit, man, one of the things that impressed us last year when you came on board was uh, just how hearty you were, mate. You were just ripping in tackles. I think a couple of times you might have come off a bit dusty yeah. <laughs> in a few interactions, mate. But um, <laughs> And, and Saucy in particular wants to know is a uh, is a little man. He's a little fella running around. You know how do you uh, how do you keep yourself ready to chop those big boys down, mate? What's your um, what's your secret to um, making those nice legs tackles? Um, I don't know. I guess sort of growing up, my old man was pretty tough on me as well with you know footy and <laughs> tackling, and you know I wasn't wasn't the biggest bloke or strongest, but I think just putting your body on the line and. All you can do is yes. have a real crack, and it's all people can sort of ask for. So it's my sort of mentality when I go in. Sweet man, nice uh, saucy. You get it, mate. So, so saucy struggles. He's got a lot of chirp, <laughs> especially on the touch and field. But you got to back it up with the shoulder, over. No eh? It's because they can't. <laughs> they, can't, they can't fifty hit me at touch. That's why. If they, if they decide to run straight at me, I just like disappear into dust, like like a Marvel movie. I just like. Just fade away. Nice, man. But you, you would have had a couple of older brothers as well, just running it straight at you as well, there, friend. Yeah, I got sort of roughed around a little bit. There was, uh, there was times like that, but um, I'd always try to give it back. But so anyway, Winston's yeah, nice, what older brothers yeah, saw, right? Roughed me up. So. <laughs> uh-huh. 
Uh, and let's just, just a couple more. Um, we ask everyone as well. It's probably mostly, mainly it's the same answer every time. Who's the biggest pest in the team, bro? I'm going to say hands down, Juz Tavanga. That's, that's everyone's yes. number one, I'm assuming. Yep. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's... We got to get him on, eh? Like, yeah, get him. He's on. the gold standard. <laughs> yeah, he's uh. He's, yeah, he's like um. He's a. Uh, he's a bit of a, a cult figure, really, isn't yeah. he? He's a. Uh, he's he's a man that um. Yeah, and he backs up his actions. I must admit, he's got a good chirp, man. So, uh, must be awesome rubbing shoulders with yeah, him. Yeah, no, he's um. You know, he's had a bit of a interrupted off season, which has been tough for him. Um, a few. I think he's had uh, two or three surgeries and. Um, he's going through a little bit off the field as well, which is um, hard. Uh, mm. One of his mates uh, has been diagnosed with cancer. So, um, yeah. yeah, the boys are feeling for him. He's been he's been training real hard, yeah. real hard. So um, he's doing everything he can to get back on the field. And um, as a Warriors fan, you want to see Jazz out there because he puts his heart in his sleeve. Yeah, nice, man. Hey, and last question I've got just relates to maybe, I don't know, a bit of... Shit, how's already going on? <laughs> if you're out going to buy a meal, you're sitting down there with your mates, with your, your Warriors mates, who's the most likely to not bring their wallet and not pay? Um, <laughs> who's the yeah, cheapest I warrior? Know, I know. <laughs> to be honest, all the boys are pretty good. Who never shouts a fee? I'm sh- this is I'm a good try- sign. He's yeah, taking a long time I'm to think about to think. it. This is a good all sign. The, yeah, all the, boys are, yeah. all the boys are pretty good. I have to be honest, I can't, I, oh, can't, nice. I can't throw any under the bus. Everyone's, everyone chips in and shouts <laughs> and stuff. So, no, I'm... I'm so I just write down Freddie yeah, Russick. Yeah, maybe it's one. me. Maybe they're all <laughs> looking at me going, fuck, he's the biggest tight ever. But, um, <laughs> i got to chill him away. I need to put some food on the table. But, no, nah, um... The, <laughs> I didn't see it, man. All the, boy, all the boys, are, all the boys are pretty good, actually. I'm not going to uh, throw anyone under the bus. Yeah, cool, bro. Have man. You... Hey, that's the right answer. Yeah. Have you um have you found any uh, any real go to uh, food spots in Auckland since you arrived? Um, when I got here, everyone was sort of uh, everyone loved uh, burger fuel. Yeah, I've only tried it once, but oh, yeah, yeah. I, there's a good little like eatery um, up the road. It's like Vietnamese and like nice like chicken rolls and stuff. That's oh, yeah, yeah, it's probably it's probably yeah, my nice. favourite to be honest. Up in uh, Mission Bay, yeah, like, up top. Nice, bro. And, nice, and what about some um, sort of uh, Kiwi lingo and slang, bro? Is there uh, is there any sort of stuff that you've picked up so far that people say that it just it makes no sense to anyone other than Kiwis? Yeah, I started to throw a few little comments in there to the to the boys at a Kiwi because us white guys, you know, try to have a little people here and there, but most of the time they sort of just turn around and tell me to shut up. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to pick up a little bit, but. Um, yeah, more so just have a little laugh here and there when I start nice. talking little Kiwi lingos and stuff. But yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> you give a bit of, a bit of encouragement, get, just go, oh, yeah, shot cares. Yeah, and <laughs> It doesn't sound like when it comes from me. So I do have one more question. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I'm just we'll... going to interchange money to back in. Yeah, I'll back call, in. I'll one more question. Is, is he oh, black and white? To... Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It's trying to phase me out after my <laughs> debacle. Um, it's in the bin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming back. Um, I know you trained at, um, was it the kickboxing, was it? Yeah. Um, Kai Kara yeah. France. Yep. Did you, were you part of that session? Oh, how was yeah. that? I'm a big fan of MMA and just wondering how it was training within uh, with Kai Kara France. And did you get to see Israel Adesanya and all that no, stuff? No, um, yeah, Kai's, Kai's our wrestling coach this year, so he's going to be with us um, the whole way. He's taking us... You know, from day one of preseason, and he's going to be there the whole time. So he's uh, he's been really cool, um, awesome. really good. And he, the boys have learnt um, plenty off him, and we're, we're transferring that onto the football field at training, which we can see, which is uh, really uh, positive to see. And we've done a few sessions down at the uh, the gym there, and you know, it's it's a different feel when you you know you step in there. You know, we're out of our comfort zone, and it's not something we're sort of used yeah. to, but. Um, Really respectful and grateful for, you know, the gym to let us, you know, train there and um, the way Kai's, you know, shown us around. It's been uh, really cool. And speaking of Izzy, I, actually saw, I saw him the other day at the, the cafe. I'm, he hasn't seen him at all, but um, I saw him on the day that uh, got announced that he's, his next fight. 
and I was sort of just starstruck. Yeah. I was wasn't sure whether to get up and ask for a photo, but I was I was too scared, so I just sat down and watched from a distance. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, that's great. I, I, I do the same. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'll do the same. <laughs> and there was a fair shot. I, I, there was a fair shot. I saw Sean Johnson with a six pack. Like everyone was standing. All the Warriors were wearing the shirt, and he was the only warrior not wearing the shirt. He was six yeah. pack and wings. He was doing his ravishing Rick Rude yeah. pose. Eh? Just like... loves it. <laughs> Absolutely loves it. The man. The man. <laughs> yeah. I guess while you're in New Zealand as well, are there any other places around the country that you're um? pretty keen on heading yeah to? i want to get i want to get around everywhere to be honest um it's sort of a bit hard at the moment because i've got a baby due um in april but um sort of the back end of the season i want to i want to get around <laughs> and you know check out new zealand i definitely want to go to i've been to queenstown once um i've been to auckland a few times but i have never you know gone anywhere else so i want to get around and explore new zealand and be really awesome hey awesome man uh, you got the uh the trial game coming up um, in a couple of nights' time from from time yep. of recording, um, how are you? Uh, how are you you're gearing up for that mentally and physically? Yeah, um, boys are looking forward to it. We've been smashed all preseason, and you know we're fit and <laughs> fit and ready to go. And can't wait to get out there and throw the footy around, and you know um, see that everything we've done in preseason and transfer it, you know, onto the field and um, put in a really good performance. And uh, we had our big sort of session today, and captain's on tomorrow, so. Uh, everything's looking really good and, um, you know, the boys are looking forward to getting out there and playing. Awesome, bro. Have you, uh, have you personally got any sort of, uh, tricks lined up for 2023, like uh, inventing a new kind of flick pass or something No, like I need to stay in my lane. That's, it's not my, uh, it's not my thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, oh yeah, that's, uh, the flick pass and stuff, that's not for me, but, um, I should try it, but <laughs> coaches probably turn around and say, hey, don't do that again. So, um, yeah, I'll just just stay in my lane and keep doing what I'm doing. So keep it nice and simple. Good awesome, man. man. Good man. That is cool. Sweet, boys. Well, um, you fellas got any more questions? Nah, I'm, I'm, sure one is, I'm sure Monday's gone black and white. He's back. Is he back? <laughs> His lighting looks black and white. I was like, oh. <laughs> The old timey <laughs> podcast. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. He's trying to face me. Yeah, pretty guy. Yeah, Freddie's like, what the hell's going on? With this, <laughs> uh, this is turning into OnlyFans. Yeah. Very, 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 very. Oh, okay, we'll cut it there. Is. Let's cut it there. Okay. <laughs> Black and white. Nah, Freddie. Um, thanks very much for jumping on, bro. We uh, really appreciate your time, uh, especially at this really busy time. Obviously, with uh, you know. Heaps going on with the trial games coming up and, you know, Bubba on the way, which is awesome. Yeah, man. Um, so, bro, yeah, thanks very much once again and, uh, and good luck uh, against the Tigers. Go Cheers, give guys. It to appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers Freddie. Have a good one. Thanks, man. Congrats on the kid. Yeah. <laughs> man, Freddie Lussick, what a good dude. Had some, uh, had some awesome chat there. And uh, he's going to be actually playing, of course, mentioned in the uh, the Tigers trial game for the Warriors against the Tigers, um, coming up at Mount Smart, which is members only, much like this podcast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, yeah, members only game, Mount Smart, which is uh, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of crowd they get there. Um, Moneta, what are, you, uh, what are you looking forward to watching uh, in that trial match, the first one of the season? Just seeing how they apply, apply themselves, I guess. They've talked big about defence and accountability, so I'm really keen to see how their defence improves this year. So, um, yeah, and from the sounds of it, pretty, like I said, um, yes, he's rearing to go. So I'm just looking forward to see how they uh, just apply it on the field. And to be honest, I'm just looking forward to watching some footy, eh? <laughs> yeah, I hear you, bro. I hear you. Uh, Isaac, first of all, actually, just coming back from... Um, from the, uh, the little break there. Uh, as Freddie was interviewed by us, Isaac had sort of just moved around. Uh, he was just going to turn on the light, everyone. So just in case anyone who got worried as to what Isaac was up to, um, that's all he was doing was just trying to <laughs> just give himself a little, oh, little not, light. Not taking a shit. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was just, uh, you know, following Freddie Lassick's lead because his camera was like, whoa, action cam. On the field, action cam. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> But um, right. he'll, pro- he'll probably play like that on the on the uh, on the trial game as well. I bet you he'll be all yeah. over the park as well. Mm. Um, I think that's just going to be his style. But I'm pretty interested interested 
to see the style of game that the Warriors adopt um, Ooh, yes. this year. So this is going to be a pretty good, you know, um, tell of what sort of style of play is it going to be the Andrew Webster way, you know? Because I'm, you know, there's the murmurings of Tohu Harris being a ball player. Is that going to extend out to this team that they've currently named so far? We're going to see a little bit more of that. Um, so yeah. That's what I'm pretty interested in seeing from this trial game, the style of play and whether they stick to that game plan and carry it forward for the rest of the year. Yeah. There's, um, <laughs> there's a lot of you know awesome young talent coming through that mm-hmm. you mentioned there, Isaac. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see uh, a few guys uh, like uh, Tane Tuopiki playing fullback. Uh, also, of course, uh, Luke Metcalf, Wheels, oh, yeah. playing Ooh. at number six. That's a uh, yeah. bit of excitement around that. Uh, and also, uh, in the forwards up front, you've got a couple of young guys like um, Zion Mayu'u and um, Jacob Laban as well. So, uh, as well as, you know, our, our boy Tom Ali um, fronting up. Um, Buddha, have you have you got your eye on anyone in particular uh, in the, the Warriors lineup? Yeah, uh, you just named the um, the spine. So I guess we've got a, they've got the young spine out there. We've got the up-and-coming spine. Well, obviously, Tamari Martin's playing seven, so just... Sit- bit of a settling older head in there but I think for, for me it'd be really interested to see how they go because um, you know they'll be challenging for spots in the main team uh, mm. so it, it's going to be really good um, and yeah just really interested to see who jumps out eh, from the young guys on the interchange uh, bench as well um, and and to you know to back up uh, Isaac's point um, yeah what's the game style really um, mm. I've got a view that, and I think I've sort of said before, well, when we've caught up, we're going to look to, without this massive, without the size we have in the in the forward pack, we're going to look to have, look for the size in our wingers as well and really get our go forward generated from our back four, back five as well. So it'd be interesting to see if we've got Kossi out there and we've got um, Mathela Matoya, um, just known, proven, you know, Carters of the ball up, eh? They just they give you nine out of ten every week. Oh, mm. for, for Jared Wood, they give you nine out of nine. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that that in play and see how we can um, harness that that go oh, forward. Oh, to, to add on to that, I definitely hope we can change a bit. I mean, like I saw an interesting stat. Um, we were like the worst in offloads last year. Like our numbers in offloads was the worst, and we used to be considered like offload kings. So I'm just wondering if we can actually start to, and back to uh, uh, Buddha's point, you know, if we're going to play a different game style, maybe that could kind of, you know, lend itself towards more of a, you know, offloading more, but more freestyle play. So we'll see what happens. It's hard to stop, eh, the second phase play. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can kill teams if you get enough going. Oh, hell yeah. I think Isaac's on mute. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell, I was just talking to myself. I was on mute. I'm always awesome, talking to myself. I'm always talking to myself Good anyway. Point. But I think there's a, another big thing with, you know, um, the squad. We've still got spaces to fill. But there, that means there's an opportunity for the likes of Tom Marley and Bunty of to really make their mark and say, like, we are definitely the next cabs off the rank when it comes to our forward stocks. Because, yep. you know, a lot of the murmurings in the, um, in the media outlets is that we are a bit thin. In our in our forward pack, in terms of the uh, the quality be- behind the starting lineup, and I think Bunty's been there long enough now, um, where he have really needs to step it up to mm. the next level. He's a fan favorite; we yeah. all love him and stuff like that. But now his opportunity to go right, I am a starter, you know, here on out. And for Tom Marler, he showed enough last year as well, enough energy, which I think was really important to say that, hey, he can really contribute to that forward pack. So I think it's theirs yep. for the taking. Agreed. Um, and if they can prove it, then looking elsewhere to fill these other three or four spots, um, don't let people even consider you know, these big names or whatever. They can take that spot. It's theirs, you mm. know? Yeah. I actually just thought of a new rule as well for us uh, moving forward this year, bro. Uh, it'll work better on video. But uh, if anyone is on mute and starts talking away... We shouldn't alert them that they're on mute. We'll just like nod and be like, mm, mm. and just like let them rattle on and see how long we can. <laughs> I didn't mm. realize this. I was like, mm. hada, hada, hada. 
Good, mm, good point. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, speaking of good points, uh, we have uh, another big game coming up this weekend, which is uh, the Indigenous All Star game um, going up against uh, New Zealand Maori. So, uh, man, I've got to say, in spite of everything that ever happens with this game, and it happens every year, guys are always dropping out and whatnot. The, the guys that turn up and play for these two teams, man, they just put on a great show. That game last they played, uh, the game they played last year, that was one of my favourite games of the whole season. Mm. Um, any any type of footy, um, but yeah, Daniel, what are your thoughts on on the Indigenous All Star Game itself, uh, bigger picture sort of stuff? Yeah, I mean, obviously, massive advocate for it. Um, as you say, I guess because it, it, what I love about it, it gives opportunity for. Māori players that play in Australia, play for Australia, you know, born and bred in Australia to actually connect with their heritage, come back. So, you know, Buns, Dylan Walker, he's represented um, New Zealand Māori previously as well. So it's a great opportunity for that. There's a bunch of players that could also be available as well. Um, And obviously what it also does is probably gives the... um, Indigenous All Stars and the Aboriginal um, and Torres Strait Island uh, uh, community an opportunity to kind of get to the similar level of what we hear in Aotearoa of Māori and the heritage we support as well. Yep. So I think it's growing. It's awesome to see in Australia, and you might feel it more over there, Jed. But from what we can see, it's it's growing as well. So it's actually this game, you know, regardless of. You know, this all stars and who's playing as well or who's not playing, which has been a bit of an issue. Um, it just gets both cultures to the platform as well. Um, the challenge is is we fit it in the rugby league calendar, um, mm. and I just don't think I just don't think the preseason is the best. But I understand the rest of the calendar is chock a block with Stadovo, and you've got grand finals as well. Um, could you do it after a grand final before the international season? Maybe I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a shame at the moment. It's not looking like as many stars are going to be available. But to your point, Jed, once they're there, they're in the camp. They're having an awesome um, history lit week, really, about um, their culture, their heritage. Um, they're just going to rip in and smash each other. So awesome. That's right. Especially um, Jake Whiten and uh, Latrell Mitchell. They want to smash each other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, boys. Sorry, that was a low blow. <laughs> Hey, but hey, it's the first time you, you fellas come to New Zealand, so we, uh, we've got to roll out the welcome mat. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, Moneta, what are your thoughts on this game? Um, Daniel, you made a great point about whether it should be a preseason game or not, because currently, as it stands, the clubs, you know, can decide who they want to let play or, or not, which really impacts, you know, the, the players and the star power that is allowed to turn out on the field. It's hard because like, I, I think it goes back to what Daniel said in regards to the timing because we just had the Rugby World Cup last year, so they must have taken a lot of out of you know all the major stars and stuff like that. And then we get they get straight into a preseason, and, and then they've got this game. So you know they, they probably see it as a risk, but like you know last year we had all like you know all the players play, and it was an awesome you know game and so forth. But um. It's a hard one. There's all these factors and stuff like that. But uh, I'd, I'd like to see, like, commitment. And, like, you know, but like you said, G, um, the players that do turn up on the field show definitely a lot of heart. And uh, they make up for it. And um, there's always a great Why spectacle. Why don't they have a tri-series at the end of the season? They play Indigenous mm-hmm. All-Stars, the Māoris, and they play the Aussie White Boys. And then <laughs> the, <laughs> the Aussie, Aussie Europeans. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the white <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> they have a great team. That's right. Yeah. It would be competitive. Yeah. I think. I think yeah. uh, probably the bigger picture for New Zealand and the New Zealand audience is that if we want these sorts of games to come to New Zealand, we have to get out there and support it because it is, you know, it's a business. It is going to make money, um, and I know. Maybe not all the stars that uh, you'd like to see are out, but if we want this game here in future, we've got to get out there and support it now, and let's support the boys that are out there representing um, their heritage, their culture. You know, let's get in behind them. I think that's yeah. that. That's the big, that's the big picture. It's 
this would mean something to them. It means something to their, um, you know, their families, their culture. Um, there's a lot of meaning behind this game, I think. So yeah. we have to get in there and support it. It also seemed um, pretty instrumental uh, in terms of, what are you mentioned, Dylan Walker having, you know, turned out for New Zealand Māori. Uh, and now he's, you know, he's actually made the move over to the Warriors. And I feel like that has actually had a, a big impact on him making that decision to, you know, to, to want to come to New Zealand and want to reconnect with his Māori blood and um, and family and that. So I, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's something really cool and something to be cherished. Um, I did have a look at uh, some of the social media today just around, um, you know, the, the Indigenous guys, you know, the poor fitty and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, some guys doing hongis and that. Um, and it just made me think that, uh, you know, the, the master class on how not to do a hongi uh, was uh, Jared Waidea Hargreaves and um, Joseph Manu. Because <laughs> uh, they've, they've done themselves a little bit of a mischief on, uh, you know, smacking their heads together. So um, uh, also, if anyone's ever a little bit, um, I don't know, tentative or whatever about going in for a hongi, all you need to remember is one rule, chin down. Just keep your chin down. That's all you need to know. Don't that's... headbutt the other person, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, it's, it's a slow sort of, like, you know, motion towards. It's not a headbutt. <laughs> but yeah, hey, we, also, we mustn't forget that the, uh, the wahine are playing as well. So there's the, yes. Yes. the Māori woman and the Indigenous woman as well, which will be, I don't know, like, uh, I don't want to change codes too much, but since we haven't been on air for a bit, um, you know, the league... I'm hoping, and I've seen the improvements of the quality of the game, might be like the Women's World Cup in mm. rugby, in the rugby code, which was out of this world, a phenomenal product to watch as well. So I'm, I'm hoping that's, um, yeah, it's going to be the same. Also going to be uh, a massive event for Rotorua in general, like you mm. know, having those two games. Man, I reckon that's going to go off this weekend. So, um, you know, history in the making, first time in New Zealand. So that's that's a big deal. Um, so yeah, a lot of cool things to look forward to uh, from the uh, Indigenous All Star Game. Is that what they call it nowadays? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. 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 Still the All Stars. Anyways, uh, we've got a lot coming up on Warriors Anonymous for 2023, uh, including a bit of a fan favourite from last year. Oh yeah, boy, the sweet, sweet fantasy baby. And to, uh, <laughs> yeah. to run us, run us through what is happening this year, Isaac Sauce. What have we got, brother? We got a bit. Right. To- throw a bit of a spanner in the works um there's not going to be just one competition uh going on there's no. going to be up to three competitions there's going to be two comps uh through the fnc nrl um uh, website i guess directly run through nrl.com there's going to be two different sorts of uh competitions there's going to be the standard um buy sell trade ching type. ching 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 Yep, so it's the standard one, salary cap one. Uh, and there's going to be a draft uh, league as well. So we'll be putting up a few posts about that in the coming oh, days. Oh, yeah. And in case you hadn't have noticed, listeners as well, um, super fan and Warriors Anonymous favorite, Zan Matsumoto, has uh, put up a post about super coach as well, which is very similar to uh, Fantasy League. Um, but give it a go as well. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. We're not getting into the era of, of uh, Super League. <laughs> In NRL, IRL, right? Two tribes, yeah. two, two tribes go to war. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that's a good thing in this day and age for fantasy players. You've mm. got your, uh, you've got your league of choice. But Zane is running the Super Coach um, competition, but we'll be putting regular shout outs uh, on the uh, on the podcast and through the uh, through the Facebook page as well. And um, if you haven't had a chance, go check out Zane on Instagram uh, at Warriorholic. He's got lots of good stuff. He's always up with the play. You would have noticed him on the Facebook page. He is a committed Warriors fan, and we love him here at Warriors Anonymous, so give him some love. He's like, I'm trying to think of a, uh, a rugby league equivalent for him. Like, who was the just the hardest worker out on the field? Because that's what the Warrior Holic is, man. He's, mm. he's Simon just Manor. putting in the money. Well, he gets everywhere. the Simon Manor medal then. Dwayne Manor. <laughs> Simon Mannering pops into my head. Mannering. So yeah, Manor- nice. Or Michael Luck. He's a top yeah, tackler Luck. every That's week. Yep. Zayn Matsumoto. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, good. That's really good. Uh, also, uh, coming back this year, uh, another favourite is going to be uh, the Expense account. Um, thanks to Greg Spence, who is going to be bringing us the good stuff. Hey, that was nice, boys. That was nice uh, Nice harmonies there. 
uh, completely <laughs> unscripted as well. Like that's that's really good. Um, so yeah, he's going to be giving us the uh, just the, the little nuggets of gold for us to share with everybody because um, he he knows some yeah he finds out some pretty cool stuff. Does uh, does Mister Spence? So um, so that's really cool. Um, actually, he's got I, one job. He's got to figure out this uh, power weight ratio thing I've got going on with the current, <laughs> the current squad. Pound for pound. Pound, pound for well. pound. Yeah, so good. I need to check him to rug it through his algorithm. If, you, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna do this squad though, I think Monero would probably win this one. I'd, I'd have to say it probably you'd win think, that. You would this think squad. Right. Yeah, you'd think oh. Monero would. But I'm just going to the gym for a couple of hours after this. <laughs> Get that That's PB it. up. <gasps> one, Get one that rip. max rip. Was that max <laughs> max R one rip? Whatever. Yeah. What is that? One forty. One forty. One forty. Ooh. 140 and 92, 91, 92 kegs dripping wet, old Freddy. Yeah. Yeah, this is just pick up props left, right, and center. Just, ah! Ah, oh, that's impressive. Get out of here, mister. <laughs> Get off me. <laughs> hey, uh, one, uh, one thing I've just thought of as well, we hadn't even prepared for this, but uh, the old um, the collective bargaining agreement between the NRL and the Players <laughs> Association. Now, that's a big problem. <laughs> It's a huge problem. It is a big problem. Um, what is everyone's uh, sort of takes on that? Because uh, that's that could be a real, real issue. Ooh, there's a lot of can, can, can someone fill yeah. me in the detail? I've seen the headlines, but what's the detail of it like? From what I understand, the uh, the two sides hadn't come together. Uh, but what the NRL had done was, I think they had led with a big sort of you know uh, media release before Christmas saying. Oh, we're going to have uh, you know a record high um, twelve point nine million salary cap, whatever it was. Uh, but the only problem with that was that they hadn't actually properly <laughs> communicated that with the players. Old mate Peter Falanges, eh? <laughs> old Peter Falanges. <laughs> yeah. Just how long that's something after they have to do. It's like, bloody hell! Let's just get it done before Christmas, shall we? Um, but yeah, so the. The Players Association haven't taken too kindly to that at all. Um, mm. And there's there's more around, it's, it's not just a, um, like a salary cap issue, there's, there's more around the, the care of the players. I, I did a little bit of reading into yeah. it um, yeah. before I got bored and then um, just you know picked up a couple of things. that They actually have some fair points, uh, but also yeah. they, they have a lot of sway as well. So potentially, uh, yeah, they, they could hold things up in terms of starting the season. So hopefully it doesn't get to that point, but... Yeah, there was one point I liked was around having a fund available for X players that come out of the game, with injuries, head injuries, and a range of injuries as well. Because yep. you know it's more and more common, eh? Like you know, guys oh. your bodies for five, ten, fifteen years playing top quality league, and they they get out of it, and you know their life isn't the same. You know, yeah. the the there's a bit of a yeah. debate so, on yeah. uh, Warriors Anonymous, say, eh, in regards to that on the on our page. <laughs> Yeah, the players feel like they're they're forgotten after the after everything they give to the game, which I don't mm-hmm. think is necessarily fair. Yeah. Um, there's a care of duty by the NRL to make sure that these players after the game are not taken care of, but maybe given them the right sort of guidance or just thought of to be still, um, like just yeah, just thought of basically. Um, and yeah. then, but the ability to access healthcare, uh, you know, all sorts of bits and pieces. You know, someone has something that's directly impacted as well, like a fund set aside, like kind of like mm-hmm. a ACC sort of backstop for um, yeah, a backstop for yeah. the players. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think also they were also saying that you know it could actually come off the salary cap itself. You know, so mm-hmm. you know, I mean, ideally they want the money and as well money to go into that but I think yeah. some of the players are like we don't have to pay you know you take 5% off the top line mm-hmm. you just feed this fund eh? so. and I've seen a lot of the argument of um, well they're paid to do a job if anyone in any other normal job decided they didn't want to do it anymore they would bring in someone else but I think it's a little bit of a different thing because these people you know these players are top of the heat in terms of you know the the game of people who play the game. You can't just interchange them with other people. You know you can't just go. Well, you're fired, and we'll bring in someone else. For well, the remember, Jed was going to swap average Joe's jobs, and they're going to bring those average Joe's <laughs> back into play league. They're going to do that as well. But, <laughs> but it, it, it's not can, the same. Like a normal yeah. job. Like yeah, if your your staff or whatever wanted to do that, you know, it'd be fairly. I don't want to say easy to find um, replacements, but you know you could find like for like these players. 
do a very specific sort of role, and um, the the league owes a lot to them. Who the you know players coming or going, you know, past players, mm. future players, they owe a lot to those players. Um, so that's kind of the way I see it. You can't really apply the whole "it's like any job" because it's not. You know? Yeah, I just think of the management of it though. Ugh, yeah, the whole. I agree to a certain extent, but I just think, you know, you know the risks. Come, I'm playing devil's advocate, right? So, um, you know the risks coming in. Some of them get paid pretty top dollar, so it could come down to like the NFL. They have like a financial advisor in terms of how you manage you know your you know your spending and stuff like that and how you put it aside for years to come and stuff like that but um it's not saying they don't get health care but they should they should probably yeah i think they just look. need to feel the yeah. love eh? the players yeah. association yeah. Um, i think they just don't feel like they're getting the, the love that they that's right deserve you know to quote uh buddha from last year you gotta try and put the mana back in management <laughs> yeah. The management. <laughs> no, no. Uh, boys, let's jump on out of here because uh, it's been a great old first episode for the uh, for the new season. My gosh, still getting, yeah, still getting used to. I'm actually kind of freaking out as to what it's going to look like on YouTube. Um, but that's oh fine. shit, that's right. <laughs> well, what's on the playback? Uh, this coming week, we've got obviously a trial game: Warriors versus the Tigers. That'll be good. Uh, there's also the Indigenous All Star Games. Uh, the uh, the guys and the girls playing on Saturday, I think it is in Rotorua. Uh, and then on Sunday, yeah. Sunday, uh, we've got uh, the SG Ball team back in action. Uh, they're playing in uh, Pukekohe against Manly. So, uh, so plenty of yeah. uh, plenty of stuff going on around the place. So, kind of be interested to have a little look at a lot of that um, this coming weekend. But uh, just before we go, we'll do a quick. It's like a hard on nah. It's just like a little bit of a spin on that. I just sort of before. So we've got uh, SG Ball, New South Wales Cup, and NRL. So rank in order, like how these teams will do for the Warriors. So do you think the NRL team will be the top performing team, or the New South Wales Cup team, or the SG Ball? I'll throw you on the throw you on the spot, <laughs> Isaac. What do you reckon, bro? Oh man, do you want me to be honest? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do it. Um, well, it's pretty tough to say because there haven't been. There's not a sample size to talk of, but um, I think New South Wales Cup, SG Ball, top team, NRL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just because I think the top team is still going to be finding their feet um, yep. and acclimatizing to a new regime. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Mm. Moneta, what are your thoughts? Exactly the same as Isaac. Yeah. So you can go New South Wales Cup, oh. SG Ball, followed by NRL. Mm-hmm. Cute. Um, <laughs> I'm going SG Ball. Um, great start. And there's that factor of those those teams coming to New Zealand to play mm. as well. So I think um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll get over them. I think the, uh, the top side might be... Slightly better well suited than the, the New South Wales Cup because we just haven't had it for a while. We don't have a, you know, we've got such a mix of group of players coming in and out of that as well. So I just don't think they've had enough time. But um, yeah, well, let's see how we go. Um, let's get back to was it two eleven when we had them all in the grand final? Absolutely, yeah, be amazing. Yeah. Would love to be proven wrong. Yeah, I'll go a slight spin on all of those. I'm just going to go. I'll go SG Ball first, New South Wales Cup, and then NRL. Anyways, that was fun. <laughs> a little bit of fun to start the year off. Um, I don't know. Let's uh, let's say goodbye, Monitor. We will uh, see you in a week, bro. You got any more houses to buy this week? No, <laughs> got no money. <laughs> fear, bro. Fear. <laughs> Isaac, bro, we will uh, we'll catch you in a few days. Why? What? <laughs> On the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Huh? laughs> Yep, uh, the resident Andrew Tate impersonator will be back. <laughs> yeah. Doing more impressions. More impersonations. <laughs> Top G. Top G. <laughs> Top G. <laughs> and, and Daniel Farakura Buddha, bro, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll catch you up in a bit, bro. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, got a, oh, oh, boys, it's video easy. They got your, uh, they got your game. Ah, oh, yes. Gotta go. Go and get it. Go and get it. <laughs> it's overdue, man. Uh, you need to return it. Overdue. You need to return it. It's overdue by 27 years. <laughs> 
<laughs> what would that be? In today's money. $25 a night for seven, uh, 17 uh, Okay, yeah, that's, that's getting up there, boys. <laughs> that's 4.5 million. <laughs> single-handedly propping up Video Easy's profit line is my overdue fees. Uh, uh, what about those porn movies? Easy. <laughs> I was going to say, Daniel. Uh, <laughs> I think we're done. This has been Warriors Anonymous. <laughs> On behalf of the boys, my name is Jared Cronin, and... Oh, let's do it. Oh, the warrior. Oh, <laughs> and return your videotapes. <laughs>